Welcome to the next talk on culture, foreign policy and society in times of change. Szanowny Panie Prezydencie, bardzo się cieszę. It's a great honor to talk with you here in Łódź. Uh, you've been President of Poland in the years 1995-2005. And as today on this conference, you're commenting on current affairs of Poland and you explain Poland to the world. So my first question is, how do you explain that Poland became a troublemaker in the last years and with which anecdote you explain it? Well, so I'm very unhappy that Poland having such a fantastic start, being a new member of NATO and European Union after some years of really serious successes, now with new government, with new majority in the parliament, it became this troublemaker, what you mentioned. In my opinion, that is a big mistake of Polish uh, policy. I think we will pay for that quite high price. Uh, Poland uh, had and still has uh, all chances to be in the mainstream of European Union, uh, to be one of the most important uh, decision makers. Uh, to influence this politics. Uh, unfortunately, everything what, what uh, the government of peace is doing now, that is marginalization of Poland. And that is that's his mistake. And that's, uh, I, I'm really very, very deeply disappointed. And I hope only uh, that is not a long, long term uh, process or history. That is only the historical episode. Because next year we'll have elections. And I hope that these pro European forces. This pro de very democratic uh, parties will win and we will replace this government by, by um, much more modern, much more, more serious uh, uh, and pro-European government in the future. Wait, you're now thinking, and you just mentioned in the current state of democracy uh, in Poland and then combining it with um, your political heritage, what is the most disappointing to you? Uh, the first that, that this, this government decided to, to, to make such politics, because uh, in my opinion there was not, no reason for that. Uh, it's necessary to understand, Polish democratic way started after this um, uh, great events uh, in the year 1989. Roundtable talks, uh, June election first, almost democratic election to the parliament. Then first non-communistic government in Poland with Tadeusz Mazowiecki, Balcerowicz reforms, so-called shock therapy. Then decision to start um, negotiations with the European Union about association agreement, then NATO, etc. And 30 years, that's because we have, well, 31, 32 years after this, that is not a very long time to strengthen democracy, to, to develop um, a very... Uh, deep-rooted pillars of, 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 of uh, democratic institutions. And I think everything what uh, peace is doing now is extremely dangerous because that is still in the moment when this democracy is not enough matured, is not enough strong and, and, and is still in many elements fragile. The most dangerous, the most risky is everything what this government is doing with judiciary system. Because uh, rule of law, that is something uh, most important for democracy. And for rule of law, we need independent uh, courts, we need independent judges, we need respect to the law, we need respect to the constitution. And everything is, is undermined by, by partly or fully by, 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 by the government. And that is, I think, the main the, the, the problem number one. The problem number two is everything what happened with public media. The public media today are in the hands of ruling party. They are not a source of information, not a source of objective, um, uh, uh, wide, deep debate. Uh, that is some kind of uh, party's propaganda. And I think that is also for, for democracy uh, dangerous. The third point is uh, this um, uh, system of... Uh, uh, of state-owned companies where the friends, colleagues and members of families of, of the people from ruling party are working. That is extremely demoralizing situation for the, for the country. But still, I repeat again, I hope that is only the episode of the history, very costly episode, but still we have a chance to be better, to, to overcome one, this One of this, your this major um, achievements is 
um, bringing Poland back to the European Union in 2004, Poland became a member of the European Union. Mm -hmm. I remember myself standing on mm -hmm. Krakow Frindek mm -hmm. and celebrating. And now, it's, um, especially during last days, this poll exit is in the media. I mean, not only during last days. Do you think that this uh, scenario is a realistic scenario? Well, yes and not. I think it's not politically it's not very realistic because still, if you see public opinion polls, more than 70, 75, sometimes 80 percent of polls are very much in favor of European Union. They know very well where we are, uh, what is the geographical location of Poland. We know how much EU is helping us, uh, how um, thanks EU we modernized country in the last year. So I think for peace it will be very difficult to organize a referendum and to say no, uh, because of, of some critics from Brussels, because of um, uh, criticism to our judicial reform, we'll, we'll go out, we will organize uh, exit. Uh, so I cannot imagine such a situation. But uh, why this, this question is, is serious? Because if what we have now, because of peace policy, Poland is marginalized in, in the European Union very much. So we have not the real influence on everything that is going in the European Union. So step by step we can achieve such situation that we will be inside European Union, but in fact we will be a little bit outside European Union. Probably we'll have a problem with finances, with funds, which can be frozen. We'll have some difficult discussions with uh, European courts, etc., etc. And that is that is a very bad scenario because it means that uh, we cannot uh, use all these opportunities, all this potential, which is inside European Union, and when we as Poland can contribute into European Union. What would the EU lose? Uh, what EU... Uh, yeah, with a poll exit. Uh, well, I think EU will lose a lot because, um, first of all, I think this uh, big um, uh, enlargement uh, in 2004 was one of the most important important decisions of European Union in the history. Second, um, uh, the countries in Central Europe, in very sensitive place of, of Europe, which are members of EU, which are sharing the same values, and they can develop, that's, that is absolutely positive for all of us, because it means more stability, more predictability, more good cooperation, good neighborhood, etc. So um, I think, uh, I'm also sure that um, the European Union um, uh, lost a lot uh, because of Brexit. Uh, of course, Great Britain uh, is losing more. But, but in any case, uh, with the uh, UK, European Union would be stronger and uh, maybe become more complicated, but better. The same I can say about Poland. Poland is a big country. Today we are number six in Europe. So that's, of course, uh, this uh, bad scenario I, I'm very much against uh, means uh, that both sides are losing. That is, I can see even maybe Putin can be the winner of the situation. Maybe that is... Um, uh, uh, fulfillment of some um, uh, Putin's dream because uh, he never was happy that uh, uh, Poland and other um, Eastern European countries are members of, of, of EU. Uh, for him it would be the next example that uh, uh, in disintegration of European Union is possible and, uh, and uh, that uh, reconstruction of this huge zone of Russian influence to Poland, to Czechia, Slovakia, etc., is possible as well. So I think if some who will be in such situation of poll exit um, uh, would um, open the bottle of champagne, is, 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 is leader of Kremlin. But still, I don't believe in such scenario. Be, 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 be more optimistic. But you were talking today also about uh, international challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, Poland is bordering with Belarus, with Ukraine, with Russia, so non-EU member states, non-NATO states. How do you judge upon the current developments, what's going on in the neighboring area? Well, I think still, you know, Ukraine is much closer to European Union, maybe not to NATO, because this um, uh, uh, Russia plays here very, very tough role to, to, to stop this possible 
uh, enlargement of, of, of NATO, but uh, uh, Ukraine signed the association agreement. They did a lot of uh, reforms. Of course, they are, I mean, Ukrainians are in very difficult situation because uh, the war is continued. Uh, Russia is doing a lot to destabilize Ukraine, but I think it's necessary to work with Ukraine. The Ukrainians um, are, many of Ukrainians are living, are working abroad in, in the European Union countries. Uh, Ukraine in the last 30 years uh, westernized very much. And I think that we should think about Ukraine as a very, very possible member of European Union in some visible future. Of course, not tomorrow after tomorrow, but in some next um, years, I think it's necessary to maybe with Ukraine, we should start with the statues of Norway uh, in the relations between Norway and European Union. But the next step, in my opinion, visible future should be full membership of European uh, of uh, Ukraine, European Union. Belarus is a different case. Because I think in Belarus we have a process of uh, uh, deepening integration with Russia. Uh, Putin uh, is, 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 is ready to use the weakness of, of Lukashenko today and to uh, press him to, to sign everything what is necessary to, 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 to have Belarus on all sign, economically, militarily, politically, etc., um, etc. Et uh, Lukashenko has no idea what to do. Uh, and and uh, I think this, uh, and of course, they, 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 they signed many, many years ago, in the 90s, they signed this document about this union between Belarus and, 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 and Russia. In Polish language, the, 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 the abbreviation is, sounds funny because it means Zbir, and you know what is Zbir. Um, but I think that is that's a process where, where, uh, where the really this even limited independence and sovereignty of Belarus is, is, uh, is, is a question mark. And, and uh, uh, of course, we'll see what Belarusian society will do because. Uh, uh, after the look after Lukashenko's election, uh, we observed that so how many young people, women, protesters on the streets. If this big and even bigger group of the people will protest, maybe this process of uh, integration will be at least slowed down, maybe maybe stopped. But today I'm 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 quite pessimistic in my opinion. At the end of the day, we'll have very very deep uh, integration between. Uh, Belarus and Russia, and in fact, the end of of Belarusian independence. You didn't speak about Germany, um, but you mentioned the spoiler Russia. What can Germany learn into, like, from Poland into talking with the Kremlin? Well, I, I tell you, first, Germany is in in, in, in a historical moment because next two weeks we have an election in, in in Germany, and nobody knows who will win. But in any case, the long era of Angela Merkel will be finished. And I think uh, Angela Merkel, she had very, very good feeling, this Fingerspitzengefühl, um, this, this, this uh, understanding of, of Russia, maybe because she, she was born in GDR, but, but uh, she understood uh, these problems quite well. How much this um, uh, feeling uh, will have a new chancellor, we'll see. Uh, in any case, it's necessary to keep dialogue. And of course, uh, Germany has much more chances to have a dialogue with Russia as others, because, you know, historically the relations between uh, Russia and, and, and Germany are full of so-called Hassliebe. So that is such combination. You could have even done the interview in German. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm busy, yeah. But, uh, but speaking English, uh, I think that, that that's such a combination. It's a lot of respect and a lot of uh, controversies, but still the dialogue is, is important. Uh, the next, I think, is important to explain to Moscow that all these tough methods are, are, are wrong, that it's not possible to use such methods like, like annexation of Crimea, Donetsk, Lugansk, because that is against um, international law and against uh, fundamental values. Uh, and, uh, and of course, uh, uh, I think that, that is something what uh, I expect uh, new chancellor will do to start uh, with Russians is, is uh, wrong to be naive. It's necessary to understand that they play uh, long ball, you know, they, they, they have strategic goals and they try to, to, to achieve these goals. 
Uh, but Germans, they have a lot of arguments because uh, this is economy, that is... Uh, I don't know how much this Nord Stream 2 will influence the situation because, of course, for Europe, especially for Central Europe, this is really very bad situation, very bad news. But I hope the Germans will manage this, this um, uh, question correctly, especially giving necessary support for Ukraine, etc. Well, everything is, is, is open. So what you would, my last question, what you suggest to the no new German government, how to talk with Poland to bring them back into the European family? No, no, we are in the European family. I think it's necessary to, to, to speak. I, I'm very glad that Markela, uh, the Angela Merkel um, uh, visit Poland with one of this Farewell's visit. This is okay. Uh, you know, I remember when we discussed after first... Uh, uh, election 2006 when peace won and we had uh, also a lot of uh, question marks, doubts what, what happened. I met during Munich conference Angela Merkel and we started to discuss and she told a very short sentence but very, very real. Well, that's democracy. Um, and uh, we have to accept the results of democracy but it doesn't mean that uh, we cannot speak, we cannot explain our position, we cannot Look for some kind of, of, uh, of compromise if it's necessary. So I think, uh, I hope that new Chancellor of Germany will, will visit Poland among the first countries to, to visit. And, and especially the business, the economic relationship, the contacts between the people, the, the relations between the regions um, on two sides of, 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 of the river. Um, are very good. That's this, uh, 30 years of German-Polish neighborhood. Yeah, treaty yeah, and the, tre the, the treaty. And then, and then uh, I tell you, if you see the reality, if you see how it works, that, that's really fantastic, you know, after so dramatic history, after everything that happened in the past. So I, I'm very proud that uh, I had my contribution in this process of Polish-German reconciliation as is necessary to continue. We have strong base for that, strong pillars for that. And first of all, we have to avoid to make uh, uh, mistakes or stupid things, and because politics is also full of stupid things, and and then then we have a problem. So that is that is something what 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 both sides, Poland and Germany, are obliged to do for our nations, for our good neighborhood, but for. All this international and also with France, Weimar Triangle, yeah, also 30, France, yeah, yeah, 30 sure. years of Weimar France, Triangle. But, but for this European environment as well. Thank you so Thank much. You. Bardzo dziękuję. Bardzo dziękuję za wywiad, za rozmowę tutaj w